Hi guys, Marika, Melton Public Library, here with you today to discuss our first week of historical fiction. So all of these books will be available here at the Melton Public Library. And um, as of today, right now we are on curbside only. So you could call us and put them on hold um, and pick them up or use go through our website and find them that way. So the first book I'm going to bring you today is The War That Saved My Life. This book is by Kimberly Brew Baker Bradley and it is um, mainly about Ada and she is 10 years old and she's never been anywhere outside of her one bedroom um, apartment. Her mom is um, not a very good person at all and she's really really humiliated by the fact that Ada has like a club foot. It's all twisted and her mom doesn't want anyone to see her and know that she has something wrong with her. So she keeps her locked in the house all the time. So when um, her brother Jamie is going to run off to avoid the war and he's going to run off to um, London, Ada decides that she's going to sneak out and go with him. So um, so while he's escaping, uh, being recruited into World War II, Ada is going to escape her very, very horrible mother. Um, so the kids wind up with this woman who reluctantly takes them in, Susan Smith. Um, and Susan has a set of her own issues, but she sees that these kids really need someone. And so she takes them in, um, so that they're finally away from their abusive mother. Um, and then all three of them kind of have to deal with some issues that are going on and learn to, um, to better themselves and that they are worthy people. So this is a really emotional book um, about overcoming emotion, emotional and physical uh, abuse and learning to accept unconditional love. Um, there's also a book too to this, so there's that. Um, this book is called The War That Saved My Life and it is by Kimberly Brew Baker Bradley. Okay. The next book that I have for you is called Moon Over Manifest, and it's by Claire Vanderpool. So Abilene is sent to the seemingly dull town of Manifest, um, Kansas, while her father tries to find a job via the railway. So this takes place in the Great Depression, 1930. Um, a lot of people are out of work and are looking for jobs. So a lot of the men will just hop on the railway and and they'll go from town to town looking uh, for any sort of work to do. So for quite some time, Abilene and her father do that. But then her dad decides over the sun summer, Abilene should go to Manifest, Kansas with a, some friends of his um, while he tries to find some sort of stable ground for the both of them. Um, so the small town of Manifest has some secrets, but it is like holding on tightly. Nobody's talking. Everyone just thinks, you know, the past is the past, leave well enough alone. Um, but when Abilene finds this old cigar box and it's filled with all of these letters from this real life spy, um, her and her new friends set off on this real life spy adventure. So will Manifest open itself to the girls? Will they find the answers that they need? And how does Abilene's dad fit in to the history and the narrative of these um, letters? And is her dad ever really coming back to her? So this is a wonderful mystery book also, um, along with the historical fiction, but it has tons of heart and a great character and you really just will not be able to put this one down. So this is called Moon Over Manifest and it's by Claire Vanderpool. The next book that I have for you is called Out of Left Field, and this book is by Ellen Cleggs. So everybody knows that Caddy Gordon is hands down 
the best pitcher there is, um, period. It doesn't matter that she's a girl. Everyone will tell you Caddy Gordon is the best pitcher. So when she goes to try out for Little League, she finds out that girls are not allowed. It does not matter how good she is. She is a girl, therefore not allowed in Little League. Um, so inspired by the civil rights movement that she's learning about, um, she sets out to prove that she's not the only girl in baseball. So with the help of some really nice librarians, um, and lots of research, Caddy discovers the forgotten history of female baseball. So this is a really um, great book that's set in 1957, um, and it deals with civil rights, internment, and equality, and also some really, really cool facts about baseball. So this is Out of Left Field, and it's by Ellen Claggs. Okay. The next book, that I'm going to bring you is called Wolf Hollow. And this book is by Lauren Wolk. So this is set in the backdrop of World War II in rural Pennsylvania. Annabelle's life um, thus far has been relatively quiet um, until this new girl Betty arrives. So at first Annabelle has some kind of high hopes um, for Betty, but then it starts to more and more come in to notice that Betty is not only a bully, she's just a really vicious, evil, vile human being who finds comfort and pleasure in doing really horrible things to people. So when Betty sets her sights on um, this sort of awkward, quiet World War I vet, Toby, um, who Toby's only ever been nice to Annabelle, um, she knows that she has to step up and step in, even if she's the only voice. Um, everyone else just kind of thinks Toby is um, a little awkward and weird and um, that it's not as bad as Annabelle thinks, but Annabelle knows that it's not okay. So this is a really um, great book about standing up for what's right even if you're standing alone. So this is um, Wolf Hollow and it is by Lauren Wolk. The last book um, that I have for you today is called The Night Diary. This one's by Vera Hirondani. Um, so this book takes place in 1947 in India, which has newly um, become independent from British rule. So they separate into two countries, Pakistan and India, and this separation has caused a lot of tension between the Hindus and the Muslims, and it's really, really dangerous along the border. So Nisha, isn't really sure where she fits because she's half Hindu, half Muslim, and her um, home has been torn apart and she's not really sure um, where she fits in. So when Nisha's father decides that the now Pakistan is really much too dangerous for them, they are going to um, become refugees and take the really long track to their new home. They start off uh, with on the rails, but then have to leave that option and go by foot. And it is a very long and dangerous trip. So Nisha lost her mother when she was born. Um, her and her brother are twins and her mom died giving birth to them. So um, she's lost her mother. She's now losing her home. She's no longer really sure where she fits in, um, but she knows that she's gonna find her place. So this book is written in, um, this book takes place within the letters that she is writing to her mother. She writes to her mother every night before she goes to bed. So this book is really good. It's like makes you thankful for everything that you have good. Um, it's sad and there's, you know, just so much emotional and just amazing things in this book. It's just wonderful. So this is called The Night Diary and it is by Vera Hiron 
um, Downy. I'm sorry. So those are my um, selections this week for week one of historical fiction. Again, those are available here at the Milton Public Library. Uh, just give us a call or go to our website to reserve them and we could bring them out to you. Uh, and yeah, we'll see you next week. Thank you. Bye.